Good afternoon. We'll jump right in. I've got a couple of brief announcements. Today at 5.45 p.m., the White House will hold a background briefing for reporters regarding the administration's Iran strategy. Then at 12.45 tomorrow, the President will deliver remarks announcing the strategy to the country. Further details on both of those events will be forthcoming. Until then, I know you guys have lots of questions. Uh, and although I really enjoy answering them every single day, uh, especially your more serious policy-focused questions that we tend to ask and hear, I thought it would be nice, since we're at the White House and we have the option of calling in the Marines, that today we might call in one of our favorites, General Kelly. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn it over to the Chief of Staff and let him make some opening comments and answer your questions today. And after he concludes, of course, our team will be around later this afternoon to answer any further questions. Thanks, guys. Well, good afternoon. Great to be here. A uh, couple of comments, I guess, and then open it up for Q&A. Uh, I would have to tell you that uh, coming into the job as, as the Chief of Staff, uh, I had decided to not do too much with the press uh, until I got my feet on the ground and uh, figured out uh, uh, what base I was on on any given day. Pre prior to this, when I was at DHS and certainly as a Marine uh, General Officer, I uh, interacted with the press a great deal. Um, but coming into this job, I really needed to get to, get to know the lay of the land. I have done, I think, three off the records, uh, the first one of which was, of course, violated. Uh, but uh, thank you for all of you that didn't violate the trust uh, from, that, uh, from the, those off the record, uh, off the record uh, periods. Uh, I would just offer to you that uh, although I read it all the time, uh, pretty consistently, I, I'm not quitting today. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't believe, and I just talked to the President, I don't think I'm being fired today. Um, and uh, I am not so frustrated in this job that uh, I'm thinking of leaving. I would tell you this is the hardest job I've ever had. Uh, this is, in my view, the most important job I ever had. Uh, I would offer, though, it is not the best job I ever had best job I ever had, as I've said many times, is when I was an enlisted Marine sergeant infantryman. That was the best job I ever had. So uh, unless things change, I'm not um, quitting, I'm not getting fired, and uh, I don't think I'll fire anyone tomorrow. So with that, John. General Kelly, if I could, you said you're not so frustrated that you're thinking of leaving, but are you frustrated? No, I'm not frustrated. This is really, really hard work. Uh, running the United States of America. I don't run it, uh, but I'm working for someone who is uh, dedicated to serving the country in the way that he's talked about for a number of years. Uh, there are incredible uh, challenges, you know, economic challenges, healthcare challenges, all of that, obviously international challenges that have to be dealt with. I, I don't mean any criticism to Mr. Trump's predecessors. But there was an awful lot of things that were, in my view, kicked down the road um, that came, have come home to roost pretty much right now that have to be dealt with. Uh, this is hard, hard work, John. And uh, my only frustration, with all due respect to everyone in the room, is when I come to work in the morning and read about things I allegedly said or things that Mr. Trump allegedly said or uh, people who were going to be fired or whatever or think, and it's just not true. Um, that's my frustration. I mean no disrespect to you all. I don't know all the names, so you. I really appreciate that and thank you for coming out here today. We hope to see you more often. Uh, let's go to one of the hard things that is facing you right now, the situation in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. And uh, since you're here to speak for the President, let's talk about his tweet this morning. Does President Trump believe that the people of Puerto Rico are American citizens yes. who deserve the same access to federal aid as the people who live in Texas and Florida? Yes. The tweet. the tweet where he says that we can't be in Puerto Rico forever. I think he said the U.S. military and FEMA can't be there forever, right? He did, yes. Okay. First responders, Puerto Rico. Uh, first FEMA responders. And, and the minute you go anywhere as a first responder, and this would apply certainly to the military, uh, you are trying very hard, working very hard to work yourself out of a job. Uh, there will be a period in which uh, we hope sooner rather than later to where the U.S. military and FEMA uh, generally speaking, can withdraw because then the government uh, and the people of uh, Puerto Rico are recovering sufficiently to start the process of rebuilding. 
Um, I just got off the phone. I've talked to him many times with the governor of Puerto Rico. Uh, great relationship. President deals with him periodically. Um, we, we saw him when we were down there last week. So, you know, th this country, our country, will stand with those American citizens in Puerto Rico until the job is done. But the tweet about FEMA and, and DOD read military is exactly accurate. They're not going to be there forever. Uh, and th the whole point is to start to work yourself out of a job and then transition to the rebuilding process. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm Dr. Anthony Harper with the Intermountain Christian News and Christian Newspaper Association. And in light of uh, the president in support of uh, pulling out of UNESCO, uh, what would the president response you know to uh, UNRWA defunding, which is a U UN agency that has been in a school specifically inciting kids to violence against the Jews and our tax dollars going into that. Do you have any uh, statement about, in light of UNESCO pulling out, uh, about UNRWA? No, I mean, I'm not as familiar probably as I should be with it. I would just offer that uh, the responsible way to look at any program, and certainly when I went to D, uh, DHS and I did this uh, in Iraq and other places I've been, when we're expending U.S. taxpayer money, we should uh, look at every program and decide whether it uh, is uh, being successful. If it's not being successful, then change it so it can be successful. Or in, sometimes you just say it's it's not going to work. Go ahead. Follow up yep. to that would be uh, Prime Minister just came out today. There was a release of the government press office in Israel. Prime Minister welcomed mm -hmm. uh, the withdrawal from UNESCO, mm -hmm. and I had met with the Prime Minister of Israel in May uh, about the UNRWA issue. He's very concerned. He made a statement in Jerusalem Post. Uh, not too long ago in denouncing UNRWA, so I thought it would be. No, I'd have to get. I'd have to get more familiar. Sorry. General Kelly. Yeah. General Kelly. Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. coming out and doing this. Um, you focused a lot on uh, process uh, and establishing processes here at the White House. I'm wondering if you can explain. Is this to the me. iron hand that I brought to the staff? No, but did you? <laughs> I mean, is that how you see it? You don't see that no. you have an iron hand. Just put some organization to it. Well, can you explain? Put a smile on my face. <laughs> Although you guys with the cameras always catch me when I'm thinking hard, and it looks like I'm frustrated and mad. Yeah, what is your frustrated face? Huh? Um, but, but back to the question. Can you explain what the process was uh, with this Pakistan raid, what the president's involvement was, how you sort of... Uh, the Pakistan raid? The Pakistan raid to release these Americans who... Uh, Caitlin Coleman and her family. Oh, no, the level. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, the, the level of the president's involvement and awareness and. Um, no, I think we have what roughly number. 20. In fact, uh, uh, about uh, with four of them, the three children, of course, being U.S. citizens, and, and the mother. Uh, we've now reduced. And I'm not making a joke here, but we've now reduced the number of hostages by almost a third. But that's not to take away from all of unfortunate people that are still being held hostage. Uh, you know, our, I'll, I'll use the term, partners in Pakistan, uh, we've been watching for the family. Uh, they, what can I say? I'm not making up a lie here. I'm just staying within the classification. Uh, the pa let me just say the Pakistanis, they're great partners in this regard that they are. And, and I don't think, I think there's been a change. Uh, hopefully there will be a change in the cooperative relationship between the United States and in Pakistan, but uh, the good news is the, the Pakistani um, officials uh, got custody of the uh, of the American citizens, four American citizens, three children, one adult uh, female, and then of course the husband uh, was is a Canadian citizen. Um, took them into custody, held them for us, not for us, held them. We had arrangements uh, to transport them back to the United States or to Canada any way they wanted to go, medical treatment along the way. A lot of this, of course, would be psychological treatment. They've been essentially living in a hole for five years. I mean, that's the kind of people we're dealing with over there. Luckily, uh, and thank God that the, uh, the Pakistani officials have uh, uh, took them into custody, so to speak, uh, from the uh, forces of evil in that part of the world. And, and they're being cared for now as we speak. General, 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 thank you, General. General. As, a, as, a, as a flag rank officer, Gentlemen of knowledge of world affairs, certainly you know the quote from Prime Minister McMillan, events, events, events. What are the events that keep you, let's say, concerned, awake at night, in terms of global affairs? 
Well, you know, I mean, they're the big ones, actually. We get, we get a nuclear threat uh, from North Korea, a uh, possible nuclear threat in time uh, by the Iranians. Um, you know, probably the biggest threat, uh, the biggest concern, and it's not an immediate concern, if this continues in North Korea, if, if eventually other countries, I'll let it go at that, uh, uh, become nuclear powers, obviously we already have some out there, um, there's a real, there'll be a real impetus for a lot of countries to develop or buy nuclear weapons. Uh, you know, I would tell you this, in spite of what uh, someone reported the other day about President uh, and I don't think he'd mind my, my sharing this, uh, what he's said to me many, many times and to the, to, to the group oftentimes. I hear him most say about nuclear weapons that wouldn't be great if we could get rid of them all uh, as opposed to we need 10 times more. So I, even more than the, when, when he references the uh, maintenance of, uh, of nuclear weapons, modern, modernization, that doesn't mean increase in numbers. I hear him say more talk more about, is, wouldn't it be great? How could we get rid of nuclear weapons? Um, so uh, not a lot keeps him up at night. I mean, the good news is out there, we have a great State Department uh, doing the diplomacy thing night and day. As Jim Mattis and I have many, many times said when we were in uniform, if we don't fund the State Department properly, buy us more bullets. Uh, so out there in the world, you've got the State Department doing what it does every day and all the rest of the great Americans that are, that are working those kind of issues. And you got the U.S. military, the greatest military on the planet. Uh, we don't like to think in terms of things turning to military, but that's always an option. The great thing about our military is it's a real deterrent uh, factor around the world, whether it's nuclear deterrent or conventional deterrent. Just to get back to uh, a thing that happened a couple of days ago. The president tweeted, uh, the problem with agreeing to a policy on immigration is that the Democrats don't want secure borders. They don't care about safety for USA. Do you think that's a fair characterization? Uh, how I would put it is that there is a, 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 um, an element within, within, first of all, let me step back and say, I believe that uh, honest men and women can disagree on anything uh, politically or otherwise. Um, the one thing I draw a little bit of a line to is on the security of the nation. There are certainly people in our country that have the opinion that, um, that open borders or near open borders are fine. Uh, people should be able to come and go. There are others, myself included. Uh, you can bet the president. Uh, but I think the majority of Americans feel as though security on the borders is important. Now, how you achieve that is a different story. I believe uh, and have, I have great relationships with the, uh, with the Mexicans. We have great relationships with the Mexicans on the border. They are in the counter drug fight with the United States. In fact, in my view, suffer more from the drug, uh, uh, our drug demand, which we don't seem to address. We're trying to now with, under the Trump administration. But uh, places like Mexico, Central America, suffer more from our drug demand uh, and, and do more in many ways to stop that drug flow than, than we do in our own country. I was recently down in Mexico before I took this job and flew into Sinaloa and uh, saw a Mexicans risk, Mexican military risking their lives, pulling out tens of thousands of poppy plants that are eventually turned into heroin and eventually consumed by Americans. Um, but we need to secure our borders, and that includes the maritime, our ports, uh, we have unbelievably dedicated men and women, CVP, DHS, uh, that, are, that are doing that every day. Uh, we need to reinforce what they're doing down on the border. We definitely need more wall or physical barrier. We have about 600 miles of that border now uh, secured by some type of uh, physical barrier. By the way, the Secure Fence Act in 2006, uh, you ought to check it out. Who, who voted for that? Certainly uh, Senator Obama did, I believe, Senator Hillary Clinton. Senator Chuck Schumer, all voted for it. And we are, have a worse situation on our southern border. Uh, and I'm condemning Mexico here again. I'm, I'm, they're, they're great partners. But we have a worse situation on our borders 10 years later, yet there's this unbelievable uh, resistance to, to, uh, to securing our border. And again, some of that is physical barrier. A lot of all of that, for sure, is people technology, things like that. So we have to secure our borders. And this includes, as I say, our ports, New York, Boston, Houston. Uh, don't have nearly the issues on the, on the northern border with Canada. 
uh, great partnerships there. But the problem with our southern border is the drug flow and the illegal immigration flow rides on a network that right now uh, comes up through uh, into the Western Hemisphere from abroad up through uh, Mexico, Central, Amer Central America, Mexico, and into the United States. Got to do something about it. Yes, sir. Thank you. You, you talk about frustrations. Um, peel back the curtain for us since you're in a first row vantage point with the president. What are his frustrations right now? And secondly, a big decision that's going to be upcoming is the Fed chair uh, position possibly here in the next few weeks or upcoming months. Um, where does that stand? How active of a, of a, uh, how actively is the administration engaging that at this moment? Uh, one of his frustrations is you, uh, all of you, um, not all of you, but m many of you. As I say, when I started, when I first started talking, again, I, I'm a, I'm a reasonable guy, but when I read in the morning, I read the, uh, well, I won't tell you what I read, but and watch TV in the morning. It's just, it is astounding to me how much is misreported. I will, I will give you the benefit of the doubt that you are operating off of contacts, leaks, whatever you call them. Um, but I, I would just offer to you the advice I'd say, uh, you know, maybe develop some better sources. Um, some person that works way down inside an office or, or uh, well, just develop some better sources. The, the uh, Congress has been frustrating uh, to him. Uh, of course, um, and our, our government is designed to be slow, and, um, and it is. Um, his sense, I think, as a, as a man who is outside of the Washington uh, arena, uh, a businessman, uh, much more of a man of action, uh, his great, I would say his great frustration is the process that he now finds himself because in his view, uh, the solutions are obvious, you know, whether it's tax cuts and tax reform, uh, health care, uh, infrastructure programs, uh, strengthening our military. To him, these all seem like obvious things that need to be done to protect the American people, bring jobs back. These are all the things that he sees as vital to protect the American people or to advance American uh, uh, economy and whatnot. And the process, is so slow and so hard sometimes to deal with. So I think those two things. And where, does the, where does everything stand with the Fed right now? Are you they're, guys days away, weeks away? Uh, uh, some time away. I mean, there's still ongoing, um, ongoing uh, 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 interviews. But every candidate, I mean, I'm, you're, I'm trying to learn about things that, are, that have to do with what you're talking about. But uh, all of the people that have been in to interview have been really first round draft choices. And we have more to come. And it's a very measured process. He has great, obviously, advisors to help him make that, that decision. General, General. Thank you. President Trump. Are the people in the front row like the most important people? Or is it? Yeah. No. 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 seriously, how do you, we're, we're, do you end up? We're the, we're the, we're the cannon fodder. We're the first in line when they, when they start shooting. Okay. General Kelly, thank you so much, and thanks for being here today. President Trump, in recent days, has gotten into a bit of a war of words with Senator Bob Corker, the latest Republican who he's had a public feud with. As his chief of staff, are you concerned that he's jeopardizing his agenda by feuding with members of his own party? Uh, I'm not. I mean, he's a straightforward guy, the, the president is. I, that's the one thing I've found he is. Um, I have found him, what am I, nine weeks in the job, willing to work with anyone to advance the agenda, the agenda being what's good for America, what protects America. Uh, you've seen him reach out to these people on the other side of the aisle. Um, I think, uh, not to get into it, well, let me just say that when members of Congress say things that are uh, unfair or critical, uh, the president has a right to defend himself. Uh, when I when I read about things that are uh, what I would perceive to be unfair or critical, uh, unnecessarily critical, I will call members of Congress and uh, just ask, you know, is there anything I can do to help you with that misconception you have or maybe explain to you why I did this or that? Uh, oftentimes, members of Congress that I talk to will say, geez, I didn't realize it came out that way, I'm sorry, or no, I, I meant it. Uh, but it was kind of a grown-up uh, comment and. And so I'll take that to the president and say, but then there's others that uh, are, uh, as the president would say, grandstanding. I, I'm not saying uh, Senator Corker's that way. I'm just saying that some people 
grandstand and, and kind of enjoy the uh, and enjoy the attention. Have you called Bob Corker? Have you called Bob Corker? But Senator in the Corker. wake of this recent I've talked to Bob Corker. Yeah. And do his tweets make your job more difficult, General Kelly? No. No. I mean, okay. the job of the chief of staff is to, is to staff the president, uh, give him the best advice, or go get the best advice I can give him, help him uh, consume advice, uh, help him work through the decision-making process uh, in an informed way. Uh, but that's my job, and uh, that's what I do. General, 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 does the president believe that Q the Cuban government is directly responsible for these attacks on Americans? And does the president plan on closing the U.S. Embassy in Cuba? And is the president aware of the visa crisis for Cuban right, what's families? The rule? How many times? How many questions can you ask? <laughs> um, the, uh, we believe that the Cuban government uh, could stop the attacks on our uh, diplomats. Now you. Waiting for the president to make a decision tomorrow about the Iran nuclear deal. Can you talk broadly about the strategy to counter Iran nefarious activities in the region? And will you list the Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organization, as some member of the Congress has suggested? I think uh, I know that uh, we have great partners in the uh, Persian Gulf region, the Arabian Gulf. Uh, clearly, we have a, a war that we're seeing every day being won. Uh, in Iraq against ISIS. I mean, in the last nine months, uh, I never felt it, I never thought I'd ever feel sorry for them, but they're getting crushed every day. Um, the caliphate's gone. We see them trying to escape from Iraq and get into Europe and places like that, which should cause Europeans uh, much concern. But back on your question about Iran, uh, the, uh, the partners in the region uh, we're very close with, great relationships with. Uh, we're out there. Uh, we have footprints on the ground, naval and, and uh, air forces there, uh, to just demonstrate our resolve, our friendship, and to try to deter anything uh, that uh, any country out there may do. Uh, so that's the approach we're taking to Iran right now. Uh, clearly, the president has, uh, he's, he's deep in thought, to say the least, about way ahead in Iran. And uh, once again, um, he's not the only one that thinks that maybe the deal that was struck under the previous administration is a deal that, in the long term, even in the medium and long term, will, will protect America. General, General, Thank you, General. 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 I wanted to ask you uh, about the effort to repeal and replace Obamacare. As we saw just uh, a few uh, moments ago, the President signed an executive order, an executive order that he says will bring more choices for Americans, will lower premiums for Americans as well. It's October the 12th. He's been in uh, office since January the 20th. Is there any particular reason why he didn't sign this executive order his first week in office? Uh, what's taken him so long? Yeah. And my other question, if I may, yeah. General, the other question is very important. Do you blame Senator McConnell, the leader of the Senate, for the failure to repeal and replace Obamacare? Yeah. On, the, uh, on the first question, uh, and I came in late to all of this, but the idea was, uh, and it is a great question, all of what was in that executive order today, uh, there, was, there was a sense that had the, the big bill passed, all of that would have been taken care of. So since the big bill didn't pass, um, and we probably won't have a, a health care um, bill until, say, the spring, this was a way to take care of as many Americans as he could legally uh, with a uh, with an executive order. As far as the, uh, the second uh, question goes, the, uh, the Congress is an extremely complicated, it's, it's designed to be an extremely complicated, slow-moving uh, part of our government. Uh, I have nothing but respect for members of Congress and the staffs that work so hard for them. Um, uh, the, the, uh, Sometimes the, it's like uh, talking to Nancy Pelosi once. Uh, she's the leader, but boy, is it really hard to lead. I'd say the same thing about the uh, majority leader in the Senate. Uh, there are 100 or whatever, 100 uh, members of Congress that uh, look to their states, 
you know, have their own political baggage to deal with, and they're not always reliable on every uh, vote to vote the way that the president or Mitch McConnell uh, wants to vote. So, that's good. one more. He's the lucky one. First of all, congratulations. On your what? <laughs> well, for the US, new job. Yeah. So, as far as U.S. India relations are concerned, recently many tragedies have taken place here, and Indian American community and India paid a tribute on 9 11 at the Georgetown University in cooperation with the Indian Embassy and also at the Gandhi Center, uh, as far as the tragedy in uh, Las Vegas is concerned. My question is that. <coughs> Indian Ambassador Mr. Sarna said that time has come now. U.S. India should stand together against all these terrorism. And same thing, Prime Minister Modi, when he was here at the White House, he told President Trump that India is with the U.S. anytime, anywhere, as far as fighting against terrorism. So where do we stand, sir, today, as far as U.S. India relations are concerned? By the way, I've just as I listened there, that face I had on was my listening intently face. Um, I would st the United States of America will stand with any country against terrorism. Um, we stand with countries we're not so friendly with, um, and we stand with countries that we're extremely friendly with, with like, like India. Uh, this cancer of ca terrorism, uh, as we crush it in, in the caliphate, is, as you all know, is moving in, in other directions to include the West into, into Western Europe. But the northern part of uh, Africa is suffering terribly and, and it will grow there as it, as it moves south in Africa. It's moving out uh, into South, is already in South Asia, very, very dangerous. I went to a, a very, very good conference that uh, King Abdullah of Jordan invited me to, the uh, Aqaba initiative where he had uh, all of the Southeast Asia uh, countries represented, particularly the, the big Muslim countries, uh, to include the Philippines. They have many, many Muslims, as you all know, in the southern part of the country. Um, and the discussion was, you know, what do we do as this, you know, ISIS form of terrorism, uh, cancerous metastasizes in those parts of the world. And their countries, the countries are very, very uh, afraid of that because they haven't, they've had to deal with it locally, um, but not, if you will, uh, you know, a threat that uh, that will uh, go into places that typically you don't normally see Islamic terrorism uh, thrive. So again, I would say that the United States uh, will work with any country, does work with every country that is trying to get its arms around uh, terrorism of, of all kinds. Um, and there are different types. It's not all religious based is the various types of terrorism, but uh, that, that would be my answer. But I think that... Sir, is President Trump going to visit India? Is President Trump going to... Ask me, who's going to... Someone ask me then. Thank you, General Kelly. I have a question about the tweets. That's a big part of this administration. Do they get you by surprise? And are they official statements? And on the war against North Korea, uh, what are the chances? Uh, should the American people be worried about a war? That's two questions. Which, yes. one, which one should I answer? Both. <laughs> uh, the, Amer the American people should be concerned about a, um, a state that has developed a pretty good ICBM capability and is developing a pretty good nuclear reentry vehicle. Um, I would believe, I think I speak for the, the administration, that that state simply cannot have the ability to reach the homeland, and for that matter, uh, well, the homeland. Right now, there's great concern about a, a lot of Americans that live in Guam. Um, right now, we think the threat is manageable, but over time, um, it, uh, if it grows beyond where it is today, uh, well, let's, let's hope that diplomacy works. As far as the tweets go, you know, it's funny, I, I, I read in the paper, you, well, you, you all know, you write it, that, uh, you know, I was, I, I've been uh, a failure at controlling the president or a failure at controlling his tweeting and all that. I, again, I was not sent in or I was not brought to this job to control anything but the flow of information to our president so that he can make the best decisions. Uh, I have found that uh, Mr. Trump, from the day I met him, does not, he's a decisive guy. Uh, he's a very thoughtful man, I should say. 
Um, he takes information in from every avenue he can, he can receive it. Uh, I restrict no one, by the way, from going in to see him. But when we go in to see him now, rather than onesies and twosies, we go in uh, and help him collectively understand uh, what, uh, what he needs to understand to make these vital decisions. So uh, again, I was not sent in to, or brought in to control him, and you should not measure my effectiveness as a chief of staff by what you think I should be doing, but simply uh, the fact is I can guarantee to you that he is now presented with options, uh, well thought out options. Those options are discussed in detail with his team, uh, and then he comes up with, it, with the right decision. But it's always, always, always focused on uh, protecting America and, and, and advancing America's uh, economic development, uh, jobs for America, safety for Americans. And which that I'll, uh, with that, I'll let you go. And uh, I enjoy reading about it tomorrow. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs>